Greetings viewers and welcome to what I am hoping will be an educational video for you. If you've clicked on this video, you are curious about the paintbrush and painting in 7 Days to Die. Keep in mind this video is being filmed in Alpha 20, so if you're playing a later version of the game, it's possible that some things may have changed. So, paintbrush. Perhaps you found one while you were running around looting. You may have purchased one from a trader somewhere. Or maybe even you crafted it in your inventory on day one without any points in anything, using one leather and two wood. You now have your hands on a fancy paintbrush, and you're not really sure how to use it or what to do with it. Well, in order to do something with it, just like real life, we have to have paint. So what are the ways that we can get paint? As I mentioned previously, the paintbrush, you can loot it. You can also purchase it from a trader. One of the other ways you can get some paint not a huge amount of it but a little bit nonetheless is if you find some clothing similar to this jacket here you'll notice a lot of the things you pick up maybe a pair of boots that are green or this jacket that's pink you can see this little die right here if you click on the item and you go to modify over here in the cosmetics slot you can grab this and you can bring it down to your inventory well once you do that if you click on the die and you scrap it just let's back out of that it gives you 15 paint, so keep that in mind, 15. Another way you can uh, get your hands on some more paint is to craft it in a campfire, which if you do it this method, it will require a cooking pot. Otherwise, you uh, take that out of there. Notice the uh, big red X here. So you've got your campfire, you've got your cooking pot. You go out in the world and you find some of those red flowers on the ground that you punch. You get a chrysanthemum. You go scoop up some water out of a puddle somewhere and you've got some murky water. So one of each of those. So we just hit cook and that will give us 100 paint for one of each of those items. So a lot more than the 15 that we get from breaking down some dye. Once you uh, level up a little bit and you get your hands on the chemistry station, throw some fuel in it. Same exact resources, one chrysanthemum, one murky water, and when we mix those up, we actually get 200. So you're going to get double the outcome for the same exact amount of resources. So we'll go ahead and turn that off since clearly we don't, uh, we don't need any extra. And we want to get to using this thing. That's why you guys are here, right? You want to learn how to paint. So we've got the paintbrush in hand. We've got some paint in our inventory. While you're holding the paintbrush, if you hold the R button, R as in Romeo, this little radial menu is going to come up. You can then move your mouse freely around. This should be highlighted here. You'll notice it's highlighted because it's got this tan color around it instead of this gray. One of the first things you can do is you can go to materials. You don't have to click. You don't have to do anything. Just put your mouse cursor over it and release the R button. This menu will pop up. From here, you can have access to any of the textures that you've seen as you're running around the game for like beer coolers, bookshelves, wooden doors, all that sort of thing, different colored concrete. There's 174 total materials to choose from and three tabs to go through. Once you've selected the material that you want, all you have to do is click on it. I've already got this one selected, black granite. Now that it's picked, you can see right here, this change around the, uh, the paintbrush here, it'll show you what you have equipped. So if I click that, it changes again. I'm gonna go back to this, I'm gonna hit escape. Now I have that texture selected. Approach the block that you want to paint and just right click. Now, it does it one square face at a time. It does not paint the entire block. As you can see, this portion of the block here, this backside is unpainted. So if let's say you're inside of your base and you want to make the interior wall a certain color and then you want to paint the outside different, that allows you to do that, this method. But you are going to, again, have to manually, individually click each section. Now, Let's say I accidentally click too fast and oops, I painted this. How do I get rid of that? Easy, look at it and left click. Kind of do a little wiping animation, clean the paint that you put on there right off, goes back to its original texture. Let's say you don't wanna sit here all day and individually click each individual square that you're trying to paint. Do you have a different option for that? Let's go ahead and clean this off real quick, just for demonstration purposes. So again, paintbrush in hand, we are holding the R key can come down here we have paint surface and we also have the paint roller personally I'm not a fan of the paint roller but obviously I'm going to show you what it does so highlight your mouse over that don't click or anything and just release R now if I pull this back up you can see this is not highlighted anymore in the paint roller is. 
Now, if I still have my black granite selected and I click right here, it throws a whole chunk down here. This is just a three by three spot and it did not paint anything under here. However, if I am looking this direction and I click this block instead, now it will reach up and it paints that. And it actually does another three by three. However, it got underneath here and did that plane and this plane of the same block. I'm not a big fan of using the paint roller for that reason, because you may think that, hey, you know what? I've got, well, this is where I want it to go. And you click and then it goes over one too far and you've got to go back and wipe it off. Well, as you can see, what happens is as I have the paint roller selected, when I wipe the paint, it takes off what was painted with that paint roller setting. So same thing, we came here and did this. If I wipe that off, it takes out that whole section and even sometimes leaves some behind. So it, to me, ends up just making a mess. If you're in a hurry and you're just trying to paint the whole side of it, then, and that works for you, then great. You do have another option to help make that a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and clean this off real quick. Take all that off. All right, now we're back to a clean slate here. So pull up our radial menu holding R and we go to paint surface release. Now, when I click here, it's gonna paint everything that is that same material that you were painting on that same plane. Notice it did not paint underneath here, and it also did not paint that there. However, if I come here, click that one, again, it's gonna select that same cobblestone material on that plane, did not paint anything down here. Just a little bit quicker, and again, if this whole wall was one material, it would extend a little bit further and actually go do that. So for example, let's run over here and look at this house. So the outside portion of this house is painted this kind of burnt up material. It's not actually burnt, it's just regular block with that texture. And then we've got our cobblestone here. If I click this piece of cobblestone while we still have paint surface selected, it's gonna paint that whole surface of cobblestone. Same thing here. Now we've just done that whole wall. It kind of skipped that one a little bit. That's fine. Touch-ups aren't too bad, but when you're having to sit here and individually click each block to get this whole wall, that would kind of be a huge pain in the butt. So let's say we're uh, building our, let's click that off again. We're building our uh, fortress wall here around our compound to keep the zombies out. And we, we don't care. We want all the sides of the wall painted. I don't want to sit here and have to click this side of the block, that side of the block, the back side. Oh, there's a fix for that too. And it's called paint all sides. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do paintbrush, and then I'm gonna also do paint all sides. Now you'll notice that they're both highlighted. So if I click on, oops, undid that. That was on me, ignore that. So we've got paint all sides, paintbrush highlighted. We come over here, we click, well, guess what? Now we just painted that whole entire block by itself. How handy is that? If we wanted to paint this whole wooden section, we could do paint surface instead. So now we've got these two highlighted. Right click, boom, this entire wooden wall section is now black granite. It did not select that because it kind of gets pinched there by these blocks here, so it doesn't let it creep up into that. If I come to this back side here, do that. Now it's reached this side. Granted, we're not able to see underneath, but if I were to get rid of those blocks real quick, you can see that it did paint everything that was there. So basically anything that it touched with that is gonna get painted. And so let's say we decide, ah, you know what? I don't want a nice shiny wall. We come back, wipe it, and it clears the entire thing off. And it doesn't matter which material you do it's gonna clean it all up the same now one thing to keep in mind if you start painting your base early you build a wooden structure you're living in it you're fighting zombies from it you're like you know what this place looks like crap i don't want to have wooden planks i want to have this sweet black granite base and you paint it and you paint it and oh man, that looks really awesome. And I'm fighting zombies and I'm going out and exploring and I loot some cobblestone somewhere and I come back and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna upgrade my base. Uh-oh, why is my paint going away? Now my base is tougher, it's made out of cobblestone, but that went away. So upgrading your materials 
wipes that texture off and it replaces it with the texture of the block because essentially what it's doing is it's removing that block, replacing it with the upgraded material and your painted block is gone. So I don't really recommend if you're really planning on playing for a long time, you're going to keep this base and live and fight from it and try to make it to day 7,000. I would wait to start painting. Maybe play around with it a little bit, check some of the textures, see what you like, what you don't like, and uh, kind of work from there. But I would, I would wait. Might be a good idea, too, to have a chem station. Then that way you're getting more paint for uh, resources instead of making it all in your campfire. And then it's not really doing you any good because your textures are getting wiped out. So let's say you're out exploring and you're, you see something in a house and you're like, oh, man, I can't, uh, I can't find that in here. I don't know which one it is or I keep trying and it's not the right one. You do have another option to kind of help you out a little bit. Let's say I really like this brick pattern. The last, the, uh, last option we have on this paintbrush here is the dropper tool. So look, put your crosshairs on the texture that you want. Hold R. I'm going to go ahead and go back to paintbrush. Turn off all sides. So I've got just my paintbrush selected. My crosshairs are looking at the brick. I'm going to highlight over texture picker, release R, and then you'll notice down here, now I have this brick pattern. So now when I come back to my base and I'm like, oh man, I don't have to have cobblestone anymore. I can have brick. So that makes it a little bit easier. It's kind of like the copy shape tool when uh, you're messing with blocks. So that's just a handy little uh, thing that you can do. Again, if you want a specific texture and you can't seem to find it in that menu, I've had that happen before. Easy way to fix that. So other than painting materials such as walls and bases, you do have another option. So storage boxes are very nice to have. You've got a lot of space in here to put your stuff in, but a plain box like this doesn't really give you much. And this looks kind of lame here, just writing on their meds, bullets, whatever. If you want to uh, add a little bit of flair to your storage and utility here, you do have these little options here for kind of basic rudimentary things so if this is let's say your weapons or your food meds put all your explosives ammo tools and building supplies in there boom you can paint it right on the box now that only works with these types of storage boxes if you do the writable storage box you cannot paint on it because they're wanting you to write text instead of do that so if you don't want these plain looking things i would recommend going with that you can also paint those on walls as well but it is going to make it look like the supply box itself. And that's that's the reason for that is because it kind of steals the texture itself from that crate. So perhaps if you're going to, if you want to label a room in your base and say, you know what, hey, this is the supply room. And this is the medical room. Obviously, we have to be able to get in there. So look at that. You know, when your buddies roll up in your base, they know where to go get the supplies from. They can come in here. Or again, just put it right on your boxes. So hopefully that was a quick explanation of what this thing does and how to use it. Hopefully you can figure out how to use it in your base. There are some other features for it if you go into the creative menu. This was just supposed to be a basic, simple tutorial. If you guys are interested in that, I can make another video explaining that so that when you go into creative mode and you start messing around building your own things and you want to make it all nice and pretty for your friends or your own viewers, then uh, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be glad to make that video for you. Anyways, if you guys found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like down below, comment if there's any questions, anything I did not explain or did not explain very well, something you still have questions about, something I could do to make my videos better for you, please feel free to let me know. I am always open to constructive criticism. If you just say the video sucked, that doesn't help me make it better and not suck. So thanks for watching and we will catch you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.